Hi there, I'm David Thorne, board member for the Selkirk and District Community Foundation. While there are many things that people miss during the pandemic, the simplest one is the ability to visit our friends and loved ones and to create memories that last a lifetime. Whether it's attending a friend's social, your weekly fitness class, or even curling on the weekends, these spaces across the Selkirk, St. Andrews, and St. Clements area provide a place to create these memories. While we wish we could have talked to everyone, we were able to sit down with four people who helped keep these community spaces running and talked about how important they are to the community and how excited they are to see everyone's smiles when life gets back to normal. Like obviously all of your guys' organizations and places have had to close down just like every other place, but it seems like now, I mean, using the term the perfect time to do it is not the right term, but it's a great time for you guys to capitalize on the fact that you don't have any people coming in and coming out. You have no rentals. So why do you think that it's important for, for your guys' places to kind of get that refresh so that when things slowly start reopening, people are allowed to come back, that you have this new lighting in place, you have this new flooring in place, you're showing people that, hey, just because COVID happened doesn't mean that we're sitting on our hands and just waiting for things to reopen. By our clubs remaining active and pushing through some of these projects they'll walk into our facilities and they'll go wow you know there was a small core of people that kept pushing through and made it extra special so that when when things do return they will be valued more i think and really become more important again in in the little communities i think there's a certain you know level of excitement to to get back into our facilities and to get back into the community. And we can feel confident that we can safely return to a community environment. I think it would be great for us to have this refreshed look because they're excited to be there and see each other and share that sort of fellowship, um, not, not just about curling, but just to be around other people. It'll be nice to have a really nice facility to be able to safely welcome people back into. Your guys' places provide a spot where people can like get together and visit their friends and nine times out of ten they're there for something that it's a positive thing. It's a it's a wedding shower, it's a wedding social, it's a bond spiel. How important it is for your guys' places for a healthy well, community, right? Like a place where people can come and celebrate, people can come in and and hang out and visit and do hobbies and whatnot. When we open up, like the Ukrainian dancers are in our building and they dance there twice a week. And there's a craft sale that we have there in the fall, a huge craft sale. Well, all that stuff will be act, act, you know, looking good when the new flooring on there and everything will be great when, they, when we can open it back up. I think the more that you can bring people together, the more people have that sense of belonging, which only improves your health outcomes in a community, right? People have a sense of connection. They take ownership over the community. It increases your sense of safety. Anytime you get together for whatever reason, you're breaking down those barriers that of isolation, and that can only improve your health outcomes in any community. Giving them hope that there is going to be a return. Being able to, you know, go to Facebook and get updates has been really great. So the fact that we're providing a little bit more more service in the community and that, you know, we're getting these grants to upgrade their facility that they're really, you know, have been scared about returning to. When they heard that the lights were going to get put in um, this spring, they were just overjoyed. It's very heartwarming um, to know that, you know, we're able to provide this opportunity for them to come back safely and feel safe. And I think what it's going to cause, um, it's going to maybe cause a little bit of a ripple effect. The volunteers, um, are going to come out from this and I think that there's um, a few younger families um, that are really happy with what's going on in the community and, and that's going to cause a positive spin. At the center of attention is local, whether it's tourism, heritage, spending your money, local restaurants, like all that stuff. Everything has just been more localized and I feel like that's going to have a ripple effect too, that people are going to want to volunteer for their local recreation club. They're going to want to volunteer for food drives hopefully yeah like i'm really like really hoping that this is the way that it's going to go it is exciting to just be part of a group that um, is like-minded community thinking and loving and um, wanting to um, continue to to make our community club there and accessible for you know our our kids and our grandkids i've been involved in the community hall there since 1970 and it, it makes me feel real good to know that we could get grants it puts a tear in my eye when i know we get the grant from the foundation for the projects that we're trying to do there 
and it makes me really proud to to uh, actually make them happen. And I, I can echo what John says. When I had to send out an email to cancel curling this year, I cried um, to send that email. That was a difficult email to send, and I know that a lot of our members received that with the same emotional sort of magnitude for some reason. I've never cried about curling in my life, but there's something about, you know, the, six, the small successes that we've had this year and the bigger success of some other years as well, but that personal reward that we all feel for collectively coming together and making something really great happen for our community is really hard to sort of articulate and put into words.